nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. You know what's something I haven't seen in a long time in graffiti? And I mean, it happens, it's just I haven't seen it as much as it used to happen. And that's spot jocking. There was a time where it used to be a little bit more common, not that it happened everywhere, but you, you, you can see it around, where people would go ahead and see a wall, and they would go, you know what, I wanna, I wanna get up on the same wall, because I mean, that person's a lot more famous than I am. So they would go ahead, rock a piece, straight letter, whatever the case was, right next to the person that they admired. And sometimes, some people would go to the extent of using the same colors as the spot that they're jacking. That way it looks like they did it with that person. Now, if you ask me, straight up, I'm gonna come right out the gate and say, I can end the video right after the sentence. I think that's corny. I think that's pitiful. I think it's desperate. I think it's absolutely corny. I don't think there's any two ways about this topic, to be honest. I mean, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below, but I don't see how you're gonna justify this. Like, how, <laughs> how desperate do you gotta be in order to grab paint of the same color, go to the wall, and pretend that you're rocking with these people? I think that's why I don't see it as much anymore. I'm gonna be honest, I think that's why we don't see this happen nearly as often. I mean, maybe in your area, maybe it happens all the time. But that just doesn't happen around here. I gotta be honest, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this topic. That is some of the most petty and pitiful crap I've ever seen. And to be real with you, I think it used to be done more. And mind you, none of this is what I'm about to say is factual. It's all like kind of my hypothesis on this, but I think the reason it might have happened a lot more in the past is because social media wasn't as prevalent. You couldn't just do something and then upload a picture on it and get four or five hundred likes, a thousand likes, five thousand likes on it. You had to actually work for people to recognize your stuff. It wasn't as easy for people to recognize your stuff. So what did you do in order to go ahead and get attention on your work? You put your work next to people who had attention. If you knew Homeboy was rocking spots and you knew people really loved this one guy's work, then the appeal of putting your work next to his made sense because you can hijack some of that fame. Not to mention the fact that the graffiti artist who was there in the first place would probably see this and immediately hate you, but uh, it worked. There's also a different kind of jacking people for their spots, and this one we're all familiar with. People going over other people's work. You got a nice straight letter rocking somewhere, and somebody comes over and, you know, goes over half your piece, or even the whole thing, but they don't buff completely. Now, this is where things get kind of finicky, because a lot of people know, it's common knowledge, that there's a hierarchy to how you go over other people's work in graffiti. You have hand styles, throw-ups go over hand styles, pieces go over throw-ups, and then, you know, the more wild style stuff, the real crazy graffiti goes on top of normal pieces. And there's a sentiment here, where you can go over someone else's work as long as your work is doper than theirs, but there's a massive problem with this, and that problem being, well, better is opinion-based after both artists know the fundamentals. For example, if we take two incredible graffiti artists with massive amounts of skill, and graffiti artist A has a wall, and graffiti artist B comes over and does something on top of it, and then you have ten people look at that wall, you'll have five people that think person A was dope, and this wall shouldn't have gotten taken away from them. And then you'll have five graffiti artists who look at person B's work, and they say, you know what, this person's better. So better really is just a matter of opinion at that point, and there's no real way to judge who's better once both artists on the spot know the basics. And this is where in certain spots, in certain areas, it's okay to take a spot as long as you buff the wall completely. That way the previous work is not visible anymore, and as a result, you're not leading to any disrespectful gestures towards that person you went over. If you don't do this, it's highly disrespectful and seen almost as if you're calling that person out in some cases. Now we gotta keep in mind, some spots are a lot more chill than others, right? If you're at a legal wall, you know what I mean? Some legal walls don't really care if you buff the wall completely, as to where other legal walls do care if you buff the wall completely. You have to feel out the etiquette of the wall you're at. Because all of this is context based. All of this you need to know who's got the spot, who's taking the spot, and what is the spot. Because this all changes if it's a DL spot, or if the piece has been rocking there for 10 years. If it's a tribute piece, that's another great example. Or if it's a legal wall. All these different scenarios change the dynamic of what you should and should not be going over. Now there's some graffiti artists that don't care about the hierarchy of going over people's work at all whatsoever. They've thrown all that to the wind, and they have the mentality of, you know what, I'ma just do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. And on some certain level, you kind of have to admire that, because that is what graffiti was all about in the beginning anyway. However, there was always a certain code of conduct. There was always a certain etiquette for graffiti artists and it all revolved around respect for one another and their work. That entire screw you mentality didn't really apply to graffiti artists who had gained respect because they had gained respect. They had worked for that respect and they had deserved it. But nowadays, that's kind of gone out of the window. And I mean, you guys saw Star Wars. You saw how upset Cap made everybody. And he was kind of the person who made that mentality a lot more famous. And some people really adhere to that mentality as to where a lot of people don't. A lot of people 
people actually follow that kind of hierarchy for graffiti and those ethics for graffiti as well. Listening to the more old school New York rules that have applied to graffiti. Because man, I've been to legal walls where people get mad if you go over their piece. And I mean, it's a legal wall that people come to frequently to paint on. Like, what do you expect to happen? At some point, your piece is gonna get gone over. And you gotta go into that expecting it. And sometimes the person going over you isn't gonna be as good. And you have to be okay with that painting at a legal spot. Otherwise, you're a clown, man. You're, you're ridiculous. And some legal spots, you don't even have to cover the person completely. You don't have to buff them out. And that's okay. In other spots, that's not okay. My best advice is when you're at a legal wall, leave your ego at the door. Humble yourself and whoever goes over you, whether it's a toy or is the whiz, you let that person rock their stuff and you don't say anything about it because it's a legal spot and you're lucky to be able to paint there in the first place. Provided that the legal spot is open for everybody. I think we covered everything as far as Jack and Spots is concerned. If I forgot anything or left something out, feel free to remind me in the comments down below and let me know what your thoughts on this specific topic. I know I went on a little bit of a rant of like actually rocking pieces next to people that are more famous. I think that's a little bit ridiculous and kind of silly. So once again, let me know what you guys think about this topic in the comments down below. Let's start up a little bit of a dialogue. But as always, guys, if you want more graffiti content, feel free to check out these videos here on the side of your screen. We have the best how to do graffiti playlist anywhere online. And here on the bottom, we just have a lot more graffiti content you can go ahead and take in. So if you enjoyed today's video, remember to hit the like button. It helps out a bunch. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. Become part of the smartest graffiti community anywhere online. As always, I'll catch you guys next week. But until then, peace.